Hi friends, I'm Sarah Norris. You're watching Doing Little and I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever sat down on your couch with a coffee and a big bar of chocolate and just felt like having a good cry because you were so overwhelmed? I'm going to start raising my hand. That was so me this weekend. There were so many things that got brought into my life this weekend and that were just already there. And by the time I got to Sunday morning, I felt completely overwhelmed. I couldn't do it. There was no way I could get everything done. And I just sat down and decided to have a pity party and give up. And then I pulled my phone out and God brought me to Facebook and showed me an amazing lesson that is changing my life and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. So stick around and you'll find out what my blessing was. So there I was on my couch having a pity party like you wouldn't believe moping instead of getting ready for Sunday. And because what else do you do when you feel like a pity party? I looked, pulled my phone up on Facebook and started scrolling. Because looking at everyone else's successes and fake stories really makes you feel better, right? No. But God led me straight to an article by Elizabeth Elliot that completely changed my attitude, turned my day around, and really is changing my life. Now, for those of you who don't know, Elizabeth Elliot was the missionary wife of Jim Elliot, who died serving trying to reach the Aachen Indians in Ecuador in 19... 56, I think. So it's been almost 63 years. At the time when her husband died, she was a 30 year old first time mom with a 10 month old baby. So when she returned to Ecuador as a single, as a widowed missionary with her daughter, she was completely alone. She had a small church of about 50 people that they had just newly, were newly saved and baptized. They had just started the ministry. She had no husband. She was the only American on the field base. She was completely alone and she was completely overwhelmed. She had so many responsibilities, so many new things that she had to figure out. And this is what she wrote about that time. This is a poem that I don't think she wrote it. It didn't sound like in, when she was writing that she wrote this poem, but this is a poem that sa she said got her through the time of being completely overwhelmed on the mission field. It says, do the next thing, do it immediately, do it with prayer, do it reliantly, casting all care. Do it with reverence, tracing his hand, who placed it before thee with earnest command. Stayed on omnipotence, safe neath his wing. Leave all resultings, do the next thing. Oh, and when I read that, I cannot even tell you what it meant to my heart. Because here I was overwhelmed at all the things that I had to do. All the things that were out of my control, but I needed to control. All of these things that I wanted to get done, but I didn't know what the next thing to do was. So this poem slapped me in the face, kicked me in the pants, whatever you wanna say. Because a lot of times in life we do, we sit on the couch just like I was, throwing a pity party because we don't know what to do, we have too much on our plate, really, all we need to do is get up and start doing the next thing. She went on to go, she went on in the article and she said, well, what is the next thing? The next thing, no matter what your situation is trusting in a living God. We don't serve a God who's dead. We don't serve a God who's in the grave. We don't serve a mysterious God in the sky. We serve Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the Father, who are present with us in our Jesus the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts he's alive with us Jesus Christ is alive he's not somebody that we just go to think about in church he's living every single moment with us so yes we can do the next thing we can get off of the couch and keep going maybe your next thing 
is going to be something little. For me, my next thing after I read that was getting off the stinking couch. And then the next thing after that was make breakfast for my family. The next thing after that was get in the car. Life is full of these little next things. And it's so easy to become overwhelmed with the big things that we have to do or the big plans we have to accomplish when really God just wants us to do the next thing. She said, finally, somehow or other, the peace of God descends upon us when we take things calmly, peacefully, and humbly as the next thing that God has assigned for us to do. So friends, if you're overwhelmed like I was, and I still get, trust me, I woke up this morning overwhelmed, just do the next thing. Don't worry about the big things. Pick up that first toy, start that one meal, vacuum that one room, clean that one dish, and just keep doing the next thing. Maybe it's read that one verse, or pray that two minutes. Just do the next thing in life, and God will take those things that you're doing, and He will make great things come of them. Little is much when God is in it. That's the whole theme of this channel and this Facebook page, is that with our little, God can still do great, great things. So friend, if you're overwhelmed today, do the next thing. I'm gonna put up this article on our Facebook page, Doing Little. If you haven't already joined us, come on over and join us. It's a great community of women who are all trying to just do the next thing for the Lord. I love you all, hope you have an awesome week. See you next time.